Hi guys, this video is going to be a sort of review of a Badger Renegade Velocity Airbrush. Um, I say a sort of review because this is not a new airbrush. This is an airbrush that I got as part of a package of somebody who was selling up. And uh, it was the airbrush, a, a standard AS186 compressor, tankless compressor which uh, uh, an ultrasonic cleaner and a fold-up spray booth. The cleaner and the compressor I will be selling on because I don't need either of those. But I've been fancying trying a Badger airbrush for a while and, uh, and it seemed like a, a pretty good deal so I thought I would, uh, I would go for it and, uh, and give the brush a try. Uh, recently Badger had a promotion on a uh, 50th birthday promotion where every airbrush in their range was $50 which is absolutely fantastic unless you live in the UK in which case the airbrush was $50 plus import duty plus shipping plus not being an American living in America tax plus goodness knows what else so by the time the airbrush would have gotten to the UK it would have been around about the same price as you could buy a Badger airbrush in the UK, which is, you know, um, quite expensive. So, unfortunately, that one was uh, out of the window. Otherwise, I would have gotten a new one in that deal. So, as it happens, I, I, uh, I got this brush. And, uh, and unfortunately, it's not in the best condition, but we'll, we'll look at that in detail in a moment. But we'll start off with the box, which I think is actually really, really nice. It's a, it's a beautiful sort of presentation box with uh, the appropriate sort of various stickers and what have you around it. And a sticker on the top showing which make and model a brush and uh, a nice little elegant catch on the front. So lovely box, lovely presentation box. And you open up the box and you've got some nice foam padding, as you can see there. And inside is, is the airbrush itself. And um, what it comes with is this, which is an adapter to change the oddball little tiny thread that Badger use to a standard 1 8 inch um, airline hose thread. This bit here is a couple of spare needles which were in the case which are not proper badger needles. They are fractionally smaller uh, in diameter. Uh, not so much so you'd notice by eye but enough that it won't actually grip in the chucking nut uh, of the airbrush itself unfortunately. And having tried those in my cheap Chinese brush I can confirm that they are actually the same uh, smaller diameter as used in the cheap Chinese airbrushes. So that's a little bit of a shame. So I thought my initial thoughts were, oh, spare needles, but sadly not. Um, so we'll just have a quick look inside of the case. We can pull this, this bit out here and underneath we've got the um, sort of Badger airbrush warranty thing in the bob and a, uh, a parts breakdown and notable features, Renegade series, etc. Um, just gives you, tells you what's what within the brush, which is quite a, quite a handy little thing. Uh, nothing that you don't see with any other airbrush really, so uh, nothing additional up in the top section there. It's just some nice, some nice sort of waffle foam padding to keep everything uh, in place, stop it rattling around. So as I say, lovely packaging, very nice, uh, very nice box. But we'll pop that, pop that aside, and we'll focus on the airbrush itself. And as I say, it's it's a sort of review because sadly this one's not in not in the best condition. It's it's not uh, it's it's not really been handled sympathetically. I don't think. And it has various sort of uh, a few bits of signs of external corrosion and some some marring where it's been attacked by by tools to um, 
presumably to undo certain parts for cleaning and what have you. So what I'm going to do is, um, is I'm going to strip the airbrush down into its component parts or as many as I'm able. Um, bearing in mind the bulk of this you should be able to strip down without any tools at all. It doesn't need a tool for the nozzle for example. Um, and then we'll zoom in and have a look at the airbrush close up. So the first thing is the cap, which is a plastic cap. I'm not a big fan of these. They're incredibly practical. Nothing wrong with them with respect to um, the practicality. They work perfectly well. But a quality airbrush, it just kind of feels a bit cheap to have a plastic cap, I think. And a quality airbrush really sort of deserves a, a metal cap. I, I feel that way anyway, but uh, as I say, it works fine. It's just a personal thing. So I'm going to unscrew the rear section. I'm going to pull out the incredibly stiff needle, which you might not be able to tell at the moment, but that's caked with bits of dried on paint and what have you. And I'm going to unscrew oops, the front section there, and there's the nozzle, which is also caked in paint. This should also come apart, but it is, I suspect, seized together with paint, but the front section with the little horns should actually unscrew from this section. And uh, I suspect that's, that's caked in paint as well, I think. So that's the needle nozzle and the front section. The plunger just pops straight out, as is fairly standard and I'm going to uh, unscrew the chucking nut and then we'll unscrew this bit here once that's undone the entire slide assembly should wiggle out like so and that's also quite dirty as well, which uh, you may or may not be able to see, but I'm going to zoom in so we can have a close-up look of these in just a moment. So that's those components. Um, and as I've managed to loosen that, I will pop this off as well. And to strip this section further you do need an allen key to undo this little bolt underneath which allows you to undo this this plunger uh, and get to the rubber seal so that's stripped down pretty much to every uh, to all of its component parts and that's one of the things that appealed to me about this brush and likewise the harder and steenbeck is similar in that it will strip down pretty much by hand and you don't need a wrench because the nozzle is just a push fit which uh, I'll show you close up in a second so um, I'm going to cut this just here and then we're going to zoom in and have a look in a bit more detail. So we're going to start by taking a close up look at the main airbrush body and as you can see we've got um, quite a nice finish actually it's sort of uh, a black chrome and Velocity stamped on one side, Badger USA on the other, stamped or etched or some such. And uh, this is where the air valve fits in at the bottom. And then the nozzle at the front. And you can see if you look down here you've got uh, a bit of sort of paint residue where it's not been particularly well cleaned and on here get this in focus for you this is where it's got a, a bit of surface corrosion unfortunately um, right in front of the trigger area I think it may have been stored somewhere damp in addition to everything else now if you look inside the bowl you can see that's pretty pretty grubby and um, that's a bit filthy it's not been cleaned particularly well and there's actually a bit of uh, corrosion which has lifted the coating and get a pointing implement uh, in here this this is actually uh, the coating in the bowl that's lifted not paint so there's a couple of little bits of this are paint which just need to be cleaned 
um, soaked with some cellulose thinner or something. Uh, but that there, that patch there is where the plating's actually lifted and it's corroded unfortunately. Um, it shouldn't affect the use because it's, it's, um, it's quite high up in the bowl, it's not it's not sort of low down, so provided once this is clean, there's nothing that's obstructing the, the movement of the needle, that should be okay. And then, I don't know how well this is going to show on here, but, try and get a, a peek down inside there, which is, this is where you'll have um, a brass, uh, nut which screws in which holds the Teflon um, packing needle packing which is sort of around well around here usually so um, I'll need to I'll actually need to get inside that and remove that as well because it needs a really really good thorough clean so that's the main body of the airbrush the needle valve now, I don't know how visible, how clear this is going to be. I'll try and focus on this closer for you. But this, this pointy bit, the valve that springs up and down, is a bit scored and it looks like it's being gripped by something, uh, presumably to, to move it. I'm assuming at some point it's been a bit, a bit stiff and rather than trying to free it off carefully it looks like it's actually been gripped by something and scored so I've already had to sand that smooth a little to to get it to stop sticking so that it actually plunges down and springs back up as I say to remove this you need a, a um, an imperial allen key uh, forget which size just off the top of my head uh, being American it uses imperial sizes to unscrew this section which is this very thin section below the thread that bit there that pops out and then the spring and everything else pops out with it and then this plunger likewise so you can give that a thorough clean there's a rubber o-ring on there so that shouldn't be left immersed in uh, in thinner we've then got the components that make up oh, let's focus back down here the components that make up the um, the needle guide um, and chuck assembly that put, go together like so and that's the bit that screws in this bit the way that my finger and thumb are holding here screw into the airbrush body and then this bit is what you push back with the trigger and this draws the needle back to allow paint to flow and this is not too bad but it uh, it does need a bit of a clean as you can see it's a it's a bit a bit grubby around there so that needs a good clean as well the trigger plunger is actually okay that's that's not bad that's uh, fairly simple there's not much to that and there's not much to any of them really some some are hinged some airbrushes have a hinged one and it, it drops down into a hole rather than going on to the point like uh, like this this one here um, but that's okay that's not too bad now we'll have a look at the nozzle and the nozzle cap and the nozzle itself and get this up close and focus for you is absolutely filthy and it's caked with a ring of paint around the tip as you can see and it's really really filthy so this is going to have to go and sit in a bath of cellulose thinner and soak as is this which as I said this earlier this bit should separate these two bits should screw apart but they're just not budging you can see the whole front of that is caked with paint so this needs to sit in a bath of, of uh, cellulose thinner to try and dissolve the paint that's gluing it together and then that should unscrew and I can give that a, a proper and thorough clean. So that's the, um, the nozzle cap and the nozzle, both very dirty. The needle, 
Now this this is interesting because the, this needle is a it's a badger needle. It's a, a genuine badger needle, but it's actually the wrong needle for this airbrush. And asking around on one of the forums, I had someone confirm to me that this particular needle with the odd tapered front and the groove at the back comes from a different model badger airbrush. And as you can see from the taper, it's not a standard smooth taper. I've got an old uh, Chinese, cheap Chinese airbrush needle up here, which I use for, for various bits and pieces. This is one that got bent and I straightened it years ago and I use it for various odds and sods um, where I need a fine needle and you can see the taper on that sort of goes starts with the gentle taper going right down to a point which is how they typically work and um, or how most airbrush needles typically work but as you can see from this one it's uh, it's not like that at all it's uh, it's an odd shape it's it's actually got a shoulder and then it, it goes into slightly straight for a while and then into a taper and it's polished and it's, it's very nice um, but it is the wrong needle for this brush as it turns out but I've also discovered today that this nozzle is also wrong for the brush now the guy that I bought it from reckons that he bought it new and it he received it like this but something certainly doesn't seem right because um, because the nozzle and needle assembly of this particular brush by default should be a 0 0.21 millimeter and um, what happens with the nozzle, the needle and nozzle assembly on this i'll just sort of put it together to demonstrate like so what happens when this is seated fully as you can see if I focus for you what happens there is the needle protrudes way past the horns which are the protective part these these bits should actually protect the needle if you bump the front of the airbrush and it should actually only protrude about that much instead of right the way out like so and uh, I did a little bit of checking uh, measuring and what have you and comparing it to the needle of my uh, Iwata and my old cheap Chinese one. The Iwata is a 0 0.5, the cheap Chinese one is a 0 0.3. This particular nozzle, it turns out that I thought that should have been a 0 0.21 is actually more like a, a 0.4 to a 0.5 and um, a 0.35 um, drill bit will actually fit inside it um, will literally slip inside the nozzle hole so it's it's a, it's at least a 0.4 mil which means that the nozzle has been replaced at some point and that also means that the chances are that this needle is actually the correct size of about 0.21 so that in itself is, is quite good, but, uh, but as I say, the nozzle size is obviously larger, which, which is a bit of a nuisance. So we've, we've sort of, I'm finding bits and pieces out as I go. Uh, the, the plastic cap, as I say, is, is just, just basically a plastic, plastic uh, plug cap. It does the job. I don't particularly like them. I don't think they look particularly good for an expensive airbrush. I think an expensive airbrush should have a more expensive looking metal cap that matches with the airbrush. Uh, this bit is okay apart from the threads being a bit grubby and what I do like about this bit is this this cutaway here and when it's in your hand this actually sits naturally over your thumb like so which I'll demonstrate once I put it back together and then this little bit is the adjuster which slots in there and it has a, a rubber o-ring and, and what this does is allows you to wind the needle stop in and out for spraying very very fine lines so what i'm going to do is zoom back out reassemble the airbrush and just show you how it sits in the hand 
So here's the brush reassembled. Um, I do need to strip it properly and give it a clean, but this is just to demonstrate, to show you the uh, the needle. Um, it's, it's kind of moving freely at the moment because I've popped the needle out and back in, but because of the paint that you saw on there, it's actually sticking in there, which is unsurprising really. But in the hand, it shows you how it fits surprisingly well because you've got, um, your finger naturally sort of curls around there and then this this finger on the trigger um, Your thumb holds it there, but then this cutaway in the back of the handle Although it's not something I would have thought about before I held this one That fits in in the crook of your your thumb and finger um, Of the, the sort of saddle. I don't know what you'd call that part of your hand actually, but it sits in there really really nicely and uh, and it's it makes it incredibly comfortable to hold and as i mentioned before the um the adjuster on the back when you press the trigger back if you wind that in you can see how that adjusts the trigger back and forth and and this is so if you want to spray very tight fine lines you can press and pull back and that will stop the needle from pulling too far back so that you can't accidentally pull it too far back and spray a big blob of paint which is a nice little feature um, my cheap Chinese airbrush has one of these and I've got to be honest doing what I do with airbrushes it's not something I've ever used I think it would be much more useful for somebody who did airbrush art perhaps uh, but I suppose if you're spraying very tight sort of camo uh, snake type patterns or something maybe it'd be useful a nice little extra feature to have anyway, but just to zoom in on this bit and show you the needle and you can see there how the needle by default should be about there, which is fully drawn back. That should, that should be where it is uh, with these horns protecting it from being knocked at the front. But as you can see, it's, it stands quite proud. Um, while it's fully seated in the nozzle. So the nozzle in this case is actually too big for the needle So I'm gonna to have to try and uh, rectify that to try and get a, the correct size nozzle for it um, Other than that the problems that I have discovered with it having popped it together and just run some um, Some alcohol isopropyl alcohol through it to try it I've got an air leak at the 1 8 adapter to there, which is not a huge thing. A bit of PTFE tape should resolve that. I've also got an air leak here, which is where this, this bit, which is where this bit uh, screws in the, the air valve. But as you can see, if I rotate that, you can see where the surface of that has been marred by some kind of tool as it's, um, that's been used to open it. And also, you can see on the edges of the body there where, uh, where some kind of tool has also been used to undo this. And on the top there, which is quite, quite evident, it's, um, it's actually gone through to the brass, which is a bit of a shame. But uh, it shouldn't actually... I mean, th that particular bit's cosmetic. Uh, this bit, I'm not sure how I'm, I'm going to seal that, but I may have to seal it around the outside. I might have to tighten that up and then um, put some kind of sealant around the outside there because it, you can't, it's not something you can really easily put a gasket on or PTFE tape. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that one, but hopefully I'll be able to to get that uh, usable. So it's air leaks sort of there, which PTFE tape and there, which I'll come up with something. I'll figure something out for that. And then, um, as I say, the nozzle problem. Other than that, it does, it does sort of spray. Uh, the needle being protruding too much does affect the spray pattern as you would expect. So that does need to be rectified. And um, though I've, I've not actually tried it with paint, with actual with actual paint spraying a model, so I can't give any feedback on that as yet. But I do like it. I think it's a, a lovely, lovely little airbrush. It's it's a really nice weight. It's um, 
I'd say it's probably a little bit lighter than my water, if anything, in the hand. It feels a little bit lighter. Maybe it's just a slightly different shape that makes me think that. It's heavier and more solid feeling than the cheap Chinese one, which you'd expect. So, so far I'm quite pleased with it. I'm, I'm a, little, a little upset about the fact that it's, it's not been treated with the greatest of care. It's, it's not, it's, it doesn't look like it's been um, handled sympathetically. But hopefully with uh, a little bit, with a thorough cleaning and a little bit of TLC, it should make a nice little airbrush. So that's my sort of review of the Badger Renegade uh, Velocity. And once I do get around to putting some paint through it onto a model, I'll, uh, I'll update on that. So I hope this has been useful for anybody looking at one and thank you for watching. Hi guys and welcome back to an update on the Badger Airbrush review. Now of course you you will only just be watching the first part of this review uh, as of the point where I bought this airbrush because I've not actually had the time to edit it and put it up on Facebook and there were a couple of little problems which I wanted to see if I could get sorted out before I edited the whole thing and, and put it up on, on um, did I say Facebook? What am I talking about? On YouTube. Um, <clears throat> now, you'll have noticed in the first part of the video I was a little unhappy because it's not really been cared for how I would have looked after my own things. Now, being a former mechanic and paint sprayer, when you work in an environment where you've got to use your tools day in, day out, and you want them to work well, you get into a habit of caring for them, cleaning them, and, uh, and keeping them in good condition. And that's kind of carried on just generally, and, uh, with, and this is the same with any tools that you use. If you've been outside working with spanners and it's rained, you wipe everything down and maybe give them, you know, with a, uh, give them a wipe with an oily rag before you throw them back in your toolbox, because they will rust. Um, you know, simple stuff like this. So, and I've mentioned obviously bits of uh, the plating that's pitted and flaked, as you can see, round and about, and uh, and the fact that it it wasn't spraying very well. I don't know if I've mentioned that, but I had actually tried spraying with it, and the results were absolutely awful. And um, I was spraying with paint mix that I'd sprayed through my water. On the same day at the same time so I'd got a good base knowing that the paint mix was correct and uh, I thought at first it was the wrong needle because the shape of the needle was one that belongs to another Badger airbrush altogether uh, but it turned out that the problem was the nozzle the nozzle that's in this is too large now the guy that I bought it from said that this is how it was when he bought it and the needle protruded way past the guard prongs let me bring this up closer and focus. So you've got the guard prongs here and the, the needle, which you can see there, it protruded sort of out here, way past the guard prongs, which obviously common sense tells you isn't, isn't right when you're used to using airbrushes. Now, if you're new to airbrushes, I could see how you'd think, okay, maybe it's supposed to be like that. But yeah, the guy, uh, the guy that I got it from said that he'd bought it new and that's how it came to him, which it could well have been, I don't know. Um, it may well have been in a shop um, and been messed about with and hadn't been put back right and shipped out like that. Who knows? Um, I'm not, you know, the, the guy was really good uh, with regards to sorting everything out. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be doubting anything. And it seemed uh, very, very genuine and all. So it's possible that that happened. And unfortunately, that very thing might have put him off. Um, airbrushing in fact because just because of that happening which is a shame if that's the case but yeah this the spraying of it was was very poor unless you were really in close doing tight lines and such where you're using small amounts of paint but the spray the spray pattern was awful now as it turns out the nozzle which is now sitting in here you would I'd have to get really up close for you to see those and uh, and see the difference between the two and obviously I'd have to take the nozzle out of this which I'm not going to do at the moment but that nozzle is at least a 0.4 if not a 0.5 nozzle 
The nozzle that's in here now is a 0.2, which is what it should be, or 0.21, I think it is. And that's the one it should be. Now, I ended up having to get my vernier calipers and micrometer to check the needle size and discovered that the needle was, in fact, the correct size, albeit from a different model badger, but it was still a genuine badger needle. And then um, I, I checked, as well as I was able, the nozzle size of the nozzle that was fitted to find that it was at least a 0.4, which is why the needle protruded so far out. So anyway, um, I entered discussion with the guy that I bought the thing from, um, went through everything that I've explained here, and he was really, really good about the whole thing. He was a, he was a great guy. I say he was, he was selling up, uh, presumably just didn't have time for the hobby, but he, um, he just went ahead and ordered me a replacement 0.2 nozzle which was incredibly good of him. Uh, that arrived a few days later in the post. I, uh, I fitted it up to the brush, which I'd already previously cleaned, so it was uh, I knew it was spotless. Put it all together, threw some paint in, and then did a test spray, and it sprays beautifully. I'm really, really pleased with it. I'll mention as well, inside the cup, the bit that I thought was a huge chip of the plating that had come away at the front, up at the top, um, I'm glad to find it turned out to be a big lump of paint that had just set like concrete there. But after a good, uh, a really good soaking and a thorough rubbing with the tissue soaked in cellulose thinner, I managed to remove that. And unfortunately, it does have some minor pitting down in the bottom of the paint cup uh, where some of the platings come away. But, you know, that's one of those things. Uh, again, it's it's just all down to uh, sort of previous care and, and storage. I think that this and the other gear had been stored somewhere where it's gotten damp as well, which never helps anything. So, you know, remnants of bits of paint and what have you, and a bit of damp, it's, it's gonna cause a bit of corrosion and what have you. But but internally, it's, it's pretty good. I've had to, I've used PTFE tape on the adapter, which works well. And because I wasn't able to use it on this join here, because the air comes out of the little vents at the side. So obviously if you wrap it with PTFE, it's going to block the air coming out up through the brush and, and along the channel here. So what I've done just for the moment is I've wrapped that with a piece of masking tape, which has stopped the leak that's coming out of the side here. Now I showed you before it was actually marred from being undone um, and obviously not, not so carefully. But that solved that problem anyway and uh, added a quick release adapter so that I can clip it into my um, my underbrush water trap that I use along uh, like, uh, as I can do with the water and what have you and as I say I've used it a few times now on my T34 as you'll have seen in my other video and I'm really really pleased with the way it sprays I love the box as I've mentioned before a fabulous storage box and it allows me to sit it in the box like that close the lid and still lock it because it's got this big thick spongy foam at the top which um, because obviously I can't put it in the cutout without taking all of this off which is a little bit of a nuisance and um, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't cut they didn't put this a little bit higher or cut that out a little bit further um, I might see if I can do something with that I don't, I don't know perhaps cut a uh, strip off the top, move that up a little, and then just cut a slot there so I can sit it in. That's not a bad idea, actually. I think I'll do that. So yes, so all in all, uh, I'm really, really pleased with it. It's a lovely brush. And obviously based on that, if anyone were to go ahead and buy themselves a brand new Badger, I honestly can't see you having a problem at all. Now the Badger um, Velocity Renegade, this one is. Lovely brush. The only thing I would say I would be critical of with respect to is it as good as any water and what have you. The only thing I would be slightly critical of is I would say no, just simply because of the interior cup. And if you compare the two side by side, this one is a little bit rougher in the finish. You can see the lines at where it's being milled out or what have you. And the bottom of the cup has got a channel sort to go and cut through it like the cheap Chinese airbrushers do and they can be a bit of a pig for collecting paint. It's not a huge problem. You can squeeze a cotton bud soaked in thinner down there, give it a good rub and it picks it up. So it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not a problem. I'm, I'm nitpicking there. But the Iwata is really, really smooth all the way down. And the way that it's designed, it's just, it's just so smooth and so easy to wipe out with a tissue. So that's the only real criticism I could, I could sort of throw at this. 
but if you're thinking about a badger go ahead go for it um, you would you would love it uh, definitely so easy to strip and clean because the nozzle isn't threaded in you just unscrew the caps um, and the nozzle pops out and it's on a tapered cone so it centralizes itself brilliant lovely little airbrush i would happily have another badger uh, what i'd like to do now is try any water um, i'd like to if i could pick one up cheaply then uh, that's something i will do at some point if not if any any of you kind folks out there have a, a not any water i'm a harder and steenbeck sorry if any of you kind folks have out there have a harder and steenbeck that you're frustrated with or you just generally don't use much and you want me to review it um, and do a sort of uh, a breakdown cover uh, cover the whole thing look at how it's put together and use it review I, I would be delighted to do that just get in touch with me drop me a message in the comments below um, otherwise I will just keep an eye out to pick up a, a decent second hand one or see uh, wait and see if I see a new one on offer somewhere because it's one of those things I don't particularly need one uh, this is a nice addition because it allows me to give to do nice tight lines with a small nozzle but um, it's, uh, it's I would like to try one of the harder and steambacks as well so so yes the the Badger Renegade Velocity uh, which I was a little bit disappointed with at first I'm absolutely delighted with now now it's got the correct components on it's working beautifully very impressed with it indeed so thumbs up thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video